if you believe it or not. The tech world is changing like it hasn't in decades. It just seems like everyone is saying goodbye Hi. to Google Chrome, Safari or whatever browser they were using. And the reason is this new browser called Arc. How is it even possible that this browser appeared out of nowhere and conquered a market in which the hurdles couldn't be higher because of companies like Google, Apple, Microsoft and so on? And the answer seems simple, right? How do you manage to shake up a gigantic industry that has been doing the same thing over decades? You rethink things and create innovation. And Arc has not only completely rethought the browser as we know it, creating an absolutely brilliant milestone. The recent announcement of the second act of the Arc journey, they are going on the full offensive. If what has been announced is even half as well thought out as their new fangled browser design, then the web search as we know it could soon undergo a huge turnaround. Hi, my name is Ayan, I'm a freelance software engineer in Germany. Today it's about this absolutely interesting topic. Behind Arc, there's the browser company, a group of highly dedicated and talented people with one goal, reinvent the internet as we know it. And they are not exactly doing it with gimmicks that will be put aside a short time later. They are shaking that one bar of the internet that everyone thought was indestructible, the web browser. And looking at the current status quo, you must think they must have gone nuts. Google Chrome alone is used by over 60% of all users around the globe. And after all, why not? It just works well, right? You need multiple tabs. Check. Here we go. You need different profiles you can switch back and forth between. Check. Here we go. You want to customize your browser to your liking with extensions. Check. There we go. And if you want to be edgy, you can use Brave for privacy or Opera GX for more RGB lighting, some other Chromium-based browser that is Google Chrome but dressed up in a prom dress, or just Safari because it's pre-installed and works good. So why consider a new browser when there's already a browser for every preference that feels exactly like Chrome? Because Arc is giving the whole industry the middle finger and turning everything upside down right from the start with their design decisions. And as it has been shown, in a good way. You want multiple tabs? Here we go. Nope. Screens are horizontal and most of the time web pages don't even use the full width of the screen. So we simply put your tabs on a sidebar on the left side of the screen. You want the URL of your current website displayed on the top of your head? Sure, here, we have it. Nope. Most browsers anyway show only the top level domain of your current website and it doesn't need the full width of the screen. So we put that into your sidebar too. Want to save your favorite sites as standalone apps? Sure, click here, add it to your home screen and use it in a different window. Nope. We spend most of our times using web apps instead of websites. So we treat your favorite sites as if they were apps and add them to your home screen as if they were really integrated into that as an application. And we show you a preview of what is going on in there when you hover over it. For example, your next appointment on your calendar app or unread emails in your email app. We use the browser for all kinds of things like work and leisure. Sure, click here, change your profile and another window with your profile shows up. Nope. We switch between work and play all the time. So you have one window and you can swipe left or right to change spaces. And there are even other innovations that I couldn't find a comparison to, like Boost that let you customize websites from the scratch without knowing anything about programming and saving them so that they get applied every time you open the website. Want your YouTube in pink and teal? Just boost it. Do you have a dozen tabs open for the same website and you don't know which is the right one to search for? Double click the tab and start typing. You have too many tabs open and you're afraid to let go? Just set how long a tab can remain open without being used before we archive it for you. And I'll stop there, but it's clear. Arc is not a carbon copy of a famous web browser, but it has already made it clear here. We are here to turn everything upside down that no one has questioned in the last decade. And you might think the break with all the things we know and are used to are more of a deterrent than an attraction. And you know what? That's actually true, but it still happens. So they have been right before as they have shown. What's next? The browser company just announced the second act of the art journey. The promise, a browser that browses for you, comprises different features, each more interesting than the last. But now let's focus on the most disruptive ones. Arc 
promises that you will command your browser and it will browse for you, saving you the hassle of Googling. Find the site you like the best and endlessly scroll through ads, auto launching videos and pop ups. And why exactly is this disruptive? Google as we know it is the unrivaled search engine of the internet for most people around the globe. At some point, the founders at Alphabet came up with the idea that having a web browser that automatically uses their search engine as the default will bring in even more money. And you might think, okay, there are other browsers, what about them? These browsers also set their default search engine to Google and receive money from Google for doing this. So if you no longer land on Google, this means that no advertising can be seen there and therefore no billions can be made on that side. Furthermore, you can also skip all the advertisement and pop-ups on recipe sites, blogs and many other sources from which Art can take the content and make it available to you without visiting those sites. Sounds really nice. Why is this disruptive? These websites are not non-profit organizations and they offer their creators a part of their ad revenue. If this is now decimated, these sites will gradually see no profit and reason to stay up online. Where will we find the content to browse for when there's nothing left to browse? Huh? Live folders are trying to anticipate your interests based on the things you have already searched for, opened and said, I want a live folder for this. Those live folders will browse the internet in real time all by themselves without you searching for the new Ihan video on YouTube but finding it in your live folder when it releases. What's disruptive about that? If you don't have to go to YouTube and see their ads or other videos that might entice you to stay longer on their site, the revenue of this site also goes down. In general, I think this goal is extremely noble. Combining the web browser, search engine and the websites and blur them into each other like it should have been from the beginning of the time of the internet. But I'm also skeptical where this journey is going. What is the browser company planning to have financial success with? I mean, it's not non-profit. You can spend millions on AI features, salaries and things like that without having any plan to generate revenue. And I hope these goals will remain noble at the end. So let's wrap it up. Act 1 of the ARC journey was to maneuver to the oligopoly of web browsers and show up to the competition. Let's say this was the attack on Google Chrome. And Act 2 feels like the browser company is moving up the ladder and taking aim at Google search engine. Unlike Act 1, this seems very targeted and like ARC browser is just a means to achieve a bigger master plan. What do you think will the next act contain? Personally, I can't even imagine what might come next, but I'm sure of one thing. It's going to be an extremely exciting ride and it's just so refreshing to see the big players getting challenged by the underdog. I'm really curious what you think about it. Make sure to leave a comment about your thoughts and hit the like button if you liked what you saw. Also, I will see if you subscribe to my channel after this video and it will help me to understand if I should make more videos on English or about these topics for you guys. Now I'll go back on the investigation on my next video. Just a little hint, it might be about PayPal. Bye!